I would like to give a talk on lessons from vaccine development timeline as one of the things that we are looking forward in this pandemic is the development of COVID-19 vaccine. And we often ask the question, when will an effective COVID-19 vaccine be available for everyone? I thought it would be, I would very briefly highlight the timeline for the development of one or two vaccine and uh, discuss how it is different from the ongoing uh, COVID-19 vaccine development process and what lesson we can learn from the history of vaccine development timeline. Uh, ever since the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic, numerous uh, experts have given their views on vaccine development. And there are positive views from many experts, including uh, the WHO. There are views that COVID-19 vaccine may be ready in 12 to 18 months, but there are also uh, many um, other views where many experts think that effective vaccine development uh, will take longer time. Uh, there are critical view on COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, Claudio Colosio, professor of Department of Health Sciences, University of uh, Milan says that it is not possible to develop a vaccine for COVID-19 soon as the RNA virus changes very quickly. And this makes it difficult to create an effective vaccine. Dan Baruch from Center for Virology Vaccine, research at Harvard uh, Medical School, Boston, also says that uh, vaccine development uh, for a new pathogen traditionally uh, takes many years or even decades. Uh, and Donny Fauci, director of National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases in the United States, and who is also one of the lead members of White House Coronavirus Task Force, told the Congress in the month of April that there is no guarantee that the vaccine is actually going to be effective. And then in the month of June, on June 30, he told the White House that coronavirus has mutated in a way that might help the pathogen to spread more easily. So these are some of the uh, critical views we see. But the global vaccine research development effort in response to COVID-19 pandemic is unprecedented in terms of scale and speed. In one of the reviews published in the month of May by Nature, it talks about the COVID-19 vaccine development landscape where they have shown a profile of COVID-19 vaccine developers by type and uh, geographic uh, location. Uh, about 75% of these vaccine developers are from private sector across the world, and the rest are being led by academic, uh, public sector, and other nonprofit organizations. And North America leads the vaccine development activity with, with about 46% developers of confirmed uh, active vaccine candidates, as compared with approximately 18% in China, 18% in Asia and Australia, excluding China, and another 18% in Europe. So this review held the view that given the imperative for dedication and speed, there is an indication that vaccine could be available for emergency use by early 2021. If so, it would necessitate a novel vaccine development paradigms, making a fundamental change from the traditional vaccine development pathway, which takes over 10 years on the average. This is for an emergency use in such an extraordinary pandemic situation. And the efficacy of the developed vaccine needs to be researched over a certain period of time. We have also uh, progressive results coming from India with development of co-vaccine, India's first uh, indigenous COVID-19 vaccine developed by Parat Biotech in collaboration with the Indian Council of Medical Research and also the National Institute of Virology. The vaccine also received um, DCGI approval for phase one and two human clinical trials. And the trials are expected to start across India from July 2020. The vaccine is targeted to be launched on Independence Day, August 15th. But in one of the interviews with NDTV, uh, with, uh, of NDTV with uh, Dr. Randip Goleria, director of AIMS, he said that the August 15 target for launching GoVaccine is only a fast track effort, whereas the actual development of vaccine is usually a long, expensive and uncertain process. He also added that August 15 timeline for vaccine uh, is unrealistic 
with the entity further commenting that there is no fixed period and the process can typically run into a decade. Now to look into the vaccine development timeline, I have picked histories of two vaccine timelines, one in the 20th century and the other in the recent times. Uh, let's talk about BCG. BCG vaccine for tuberculosis and other uh, mycobacterial infection is the only available vaccine that has been used for over 90 years with an astonishing safety records although its efficacy remains controversial. Uh, India is uh, one of the countries where the PCG vaccine is routinely used in the neonates. For this reason, until the recent spike of coronavirus cases in the country, there was a belief that COVID-19 cases are lesser in India due to PCG vaccination. Now, the two uh, French scientists, Calmet and Gurin, started uh, their work on tuberculosis infection way back in 1905. And in 1908, they started uh, working on the vaccine uh, against tuberculosis. In 1918, animal trials were conducted by injecting a denuded bacterium on the cattle and some species of monkey. In uh, 1921, the first PCG vaccine was used in human. However, the, effectif the effectiveness of the vaccine developed over the years. And so um, we <clears throat> it was developed only after a long time. And even now, uh, the efficacy is only 70 to 80 percent. However, in 1997, the BCG became available around the world. And in 1928, BCG vaccine was adopted by Health Committee of the League of Nations and later by the WHO. If we just look at it, it took 13 to 15 years to develop a usable vaccine in the early 20th century. Uh, but uh, BCG is not used as a routine vaccination in many Western countries now. And even after more than 90 years of using this vaccine, in 2016, it was reported that 1.7 million people in the world died due to tuberculosis. Now, uh, let's look on the recent um, disease, the Ebola vaccine. Ebola virus is transmitted by wild animals to humans and it spreads in human population through human to human transmission. And it is having a fatality rate ranging from 25 to 90% in the past outbreaks. Ebola virus uh, disease emerged at exceptional epidemic levels in West Africa in 2014. And since then, more than 30 outbreaks have occurred in Africa alone. So since 2014, the European Medical Agency in collaboration with WHO uh, have worked on the vaccine development and consequently experimental Ebola treatments started in the same year. In 2015, clinical trials of investigational vaccine was started. And in the next year, that is in 2016, the final report on experimental treatments review was submitted. Then in 2018, Ebola vaccine for emergency use was developed, which was only investigational vaccine with the European Medical Agency giving a talk uh, expert consultation to WHO on clinical trials of Ebola therapeutics. In 2019, the first Ebola vaccine was approved, being supported by the European Commission Health Security Committee. And by November 2019, conditional marketing authorization of Ebola vaccine was granted by the European Commission. So with all modern scientific and technological advancement in the 21st century, the process of vaccine development in the case of Ebola virus thesis took only five years. And the performance of the vaccine uh, is also very impressive with an efficacy of 95 to 97%. Now for COVID-19, vaccine development has been fast-tracked in a number of ways. The first stage is research and development, which typically takes two to four years. But now with mRNA technology, research is based on the virus genetic code instead of its protein, which involves injecting uh, genetic instructions to human cells for creating proteins to fight the virus. And uh, this takes much lesser time. The second uh, stage is preclinical tests, where traditionally tests are done on the cell cultures and animals, taking two to three years. But for COVID-19, this stage is shortened by performing various uh, sub-stages simultaneously. Then the third stage is clinical trials, which will take some time because the vaccine is first given to a small group and then to hundreds and then to thousands to assess how a vaccine works in large population. Stages 
uh, four, five, and six are uh, regulatory review, manufacturing, and quality control, respectively. And it is expected to be shortened because in this time of crisis, all manufacturers and regulators are ready to speed up the process. But the 12 to 18 month timeline is very much uh, unprecedented. And the scientific community, manufacturers and regulatory agencies are faced with uh, numerous problems in the race for the finish line in the stipulated time. For example, the scientific community have limited data on the rate of mutation in this virus, which will actually show how effectively a potential vaccine will work. And although the mRNA technologies are known to be able to combine multiple antigens if necessary, the technology is not a fully proven one. And then for the companies, even the process of uh, filling the liquid vaccine into a sterile vial for 7 billion population is an enormous task. But for the regulatory agencies, the regulation of safety measures, licensing, and quality control takes a lot of time. Therefore, we can say that it is not easy to achieve the, in this timeline unless there is extensive global partnership. And uh, in conclusion, uh, I would like to say that it is imperative that any assessment of potential availability and timing of a vaccine also requires an understanding of the uncertainties. We need to be informed about the scientific uncertainty against a new pathogen about which the scientific knowledge is still nascent. Uh, there is also uncertainty in the level of efficacy of vaccine against a virus which is not uh, fully known. And it may take years for a full efficacy study. And there is also another uncertainty of whether the vaccine will reach the rural masses without delay. And this will require a participatory strategic planning process for procurement and distribution of vaccine. So as we talk about the anthropological responses to COVID-19, I thought it would be worthwhile to look up some information on vaccine development and also uh, discuss so that we as an anthropologist can give an accurate information to the people around us. I cannot really say what can be the anthropological implication of this talk. I think since we are committed to the study of human behavior, we also have the responsibility of giving precautionary information to the masses based on facts and history so that the social behavior will not depend on false assumption. And that's all I have to share. Thank you very much for listening.